Hello, so for this tutorial I am going to use level flow to create a custom flow node to set a material on an object in your scene. Currently I have a uh, car here in my scene. I'm just using a basic template. Uh, it's just a regular car. You can look at it here in our uh, browser. And it just has a simple material here assigned uh, for sheet metal. And I have some properties over here. So one of the, the variables in this material is base color. So if we go to our level flow, I currently have set up to get the material variable and change that on a key press. Now this isn't what I want to do in the end result, but to start, this is where I want to begin. So the way that we can change a material variable is that we get the level unit, which is our car. And then we get the unit's mesh, which in the unit's mesh, the name of the mesh that I would like to change as I open here in the unit editor is body. As you can see I can select the mesh name as multiple meshes in this unit. It is the body which is what I want to change. And if we look at the materials here you can see that body corresponds to this slot C0 where it has sheet metal assigned here. So when we have that information we get the level unit which is our car. We get the unit mesh which is body. Then we want to get the meshes slot material, which is slot name C0, which is what we just saw in the unit editor. The next we want to do is we want to set that material variable. So basically I am telling the material variable name is base underscore color, which is the name of the variable that we're setting. And then I'm just giving it a, a three vector color here, which is 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, which is a grayish color. And I'm saying on the keyboard button press, button name T, when it is pressed I want to change it to this color from the original. Then I'm going to print to screen and say I've changed it to gray. Then on the release of the button I'm going to change it back to its original red color from the uh, material. Again using the base color set material variable. And then I'm going to print to screen that I have changed this red. So if I go back and play my scene now You can see that it turns gray when I hold T, and when I release T, it turns back to red. And you can see that it says variable out red, and when I hit T again, variable out gray, release, variable out red. So I'm just basically hitting the T button to swap between my two colors, gray and red, using the material variable in the material. Now what I really want to do is I want to change the material itself. So if I dragged out here, you would think I could just plug in a material node. Well, if I look under material, there's no node to make a material. Uh, there's nothing under flow controller script. So what I've realized now is that I have to create a custom uh, flow node that's going to set my material for me. So to do that, we need to go to our root level here. We need to go to our script folder. First thing we see in our script folder is a global script flow node. So if we open this up, you can see in our script editor, we just have one custom node here, for example, printing to string. There's, there's nothing else in here. And then the next place that we need to open is we need to go into the Lua folder, and we need to open the flow callbacks, which is where we're going to actually write our function, which we're going to call through our global.script flow nodes. So now let's uh, start writing our function. So we're just going to go after this function, a couple lines here. And we're going to create a function that's going to set our unit material. So we're going to go function. And we want to start this off with project flow callbacks. And this will autofill for you as you go. And I'm going to call this set unit material. We want to put a T in here for table. I'm going to create a local for my unit. And this is going to be t.unit. And then I'm going to do a local for my slot, which is the material slot that we're going to name, which is going to be t.slot underscore name. This will be the name of the slot that we want our material to go into. And then we're going to do a local for the material, t.material. Then we're going to do an if statement here and say if my unit and my slot and my material are all filled, then we're going to say stingray dot 
unit dot set underscore material and then we're going to put in here unit slot and material as we had above I'm going to end that if and then I'm going to return t I will end that entire function here so now what we've done is we have created a function that is going to allow us to put in a unit, a slot, a material, and then set that if those slots are filled based on the in value of our node. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go to my global script flow nodes and I'm going to put a couple returns in here. Now I want to create my node itself. So we need to name this and I'm going to call this set unit material. We need our arguments in here. First we have <clears throat> unit equals oops unit we have slot name equals string. We want to put our material in here. This is going to equal type is going to be resource extension equals material we want to close our brackets here our function that we're going to call is project flow callbacks dot set unit material And since this is local to our project, our category is going to be project. And that's where we'll find it in our list when we go to do our drop down. So I'm going to clean some of this up here. We don't need these extra brackets since I manually put them in. So here we have our creation of our node. Our name is going to be set unit material. That's the name you'll look for. You look for it in the category of project. It's going to have these arguments, which we can then put into our nodes. And then uh, it's going to call this function that we just defined in flow callbacks.lua. So we're going to save that. Now I'm going to go back to my level flow. And these are already going to be hot loaded for me now that I've done that in real time. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to project, set unit material is my new flow node. And now I'm just going to get my level unit, which is my car. I'm going to go directly in here. My material, I'm going to select from a list here. I want to do my metallic material. So I'm just going to start typing in metallic. And my slot name, I know from before, is C0. So now on my key press, I'm just going to say, hey, if my key is pressed, then change this slot's material to this material. I'm going to copy and paste this again. Now I'm going to say when this is released, come in here and change this back to the original sheet metal. And on the out, I'm going to have a print to screen that says sheet metal. And on my out for my other change, I'm going to have my text say metallic. So the expected behavior here 
is that now I'm just going to swap materials instead of changing a material variable. Every time I hit the T key, it'll swap and it'll print to screen what I have swapped to. So if I just save this level, go back to my viewport. So now if I hit play, here's my vehicle. And if I hit the T key, you can see that if I hold it down, it is my metallic color. And when I release, it goes back to my sheet metal material. So I hit T and it changes, I release T and it swaps back to my metallic. And you can see this change up close here, it gives me this nice metallic sheen that I was looking for, or if I release that button, now I have swapped back to my red color. So that is a very quick tutorial on how to use a custom flow node to change material. Again, we'll go back to our level flow to see what we did there. We have our unit plugged into both our set unit material custom flow nodes, our print to screens, and our button key press here to do pressed and release. If we go back to our script editor, you can see that for our global.script flow nodes, we have defined here a set unit material node with our arguments for unit slot name and material. This type is a resource. Its extension is material, and we're calling the function project flow callbacks dot set unit material right here. We have defined that function in our flow underscore callbacks Lua in our project. Here's the function. It's doing our locals for unit slot and material as tables, which we will then enter into our flow node. And if those are filled, we're calling stingray dot unit dot set material for unit slot and material. So that's a quick tutorial on how to create a custom flow node in real time while you're working in the editor and how to change a material on uh, an object in your scene. Thanks and look forward to more tutorials.